you doing? It's Colin Daniel from RiffNinja.com. Here to give you a little teensy weensy bit, a little taste, a little teaser taste of what I got on RiffNinja.com. Uh, so if you're a real serious guitar player and you really want to know how to play the guitar, you're going to have to get your butt over to my website and then I'll give you some more info. Um, this is the intro to Purple Haze. And uh, that's a fabulous intro and there's so much theory involved with it. Jimmy had quite the amazing ear. Um, uh, to find out more about that, again, you'd have to come to my uh, website, take some lessons from me because it's quite involved. I mean, it sounds good, but there's a lot of reasons why it sounds good. It comes out of a scale, of course, and uh, the very beginning is something that broke a lot of rules back in the day. It's called a flatted fifth, a diminished fifth. It's the uh, devil's chord, the devil's interval. Uh, the way I play it is I use my E here in the seventh fret on my fifth string. That's my E, and then I play a B flat, which is at the uh, sixth string, sixth fret. And I play another B flat up here at the uh, fifth or fourth string, um, seventh, eighth fret, should I say. Let's go over that again one more time. Um, e is at the seventh fret. That's on my fifth string. B flat is at my sixth fret, sixth string. And the other B flat is at my fourth string, eighth fret. Together, they provide two diminished fifths, one inverted, one uh, root inversion, one in inverted. Uh, for example, here, when I play the downstroke, I'm playing a B flat over an E, which is technically augmented fourth. But we'll call it a flatted fifth because on the upstroke, so on the downstroke, you get the sixth and fifth string. On the upstroke, you get the fourth and fifth. So it's like down, sixth and fifth, up uh, from the upstroke, fourth and fifth. And then it becomes this cool octave inversion because it's based on the E because that's the key the song's in. And the B flats are your flatted fifth because B is, is the perfect fifth. So B flat's got to be the flat of fifth. You can call it augmented fourth, depending on uh, what side of the street you came on for the harmonies. It means the same thing. So here it is. This is what he starts with, and it's you, you know you hit that fifth and sixth string. And now the rest of it. That's that's a tricky spot. Now the rest of it. Okay, he uses what I call a root 5 E minor scale. It's an E pentatonic or blues minor. Um, it based, your finger pattern or your fingers are going to be lined up pretty much. There's two positions. The, the uh, upper position, the one you start on for the riff, is based on the uh, first finger staying at the 7th uh, fret, the uh, second finger staying at the 8th fret, the third finger at the 9th, and the pinky at the 10th, right? Okay, that's your hand position. If, if you get the hand position, it'll be a lot easier to play this riff, okay? And the other position is just below it. The uh, first finger is assigned to the fifth fret, the second finger is assigned to the sixth, third finger is assigned to the seventh fret, and pinky assigned to the eighth. So the first position, is so the first three notes, without the slide, like you, I randomly slide up, I guess you could say that you slide up from the fifth fret on the uh, fourth string, right? And I slide all the way up to what happens to be a B, right? which is the uh, ninth fret, fourth string. Right? So I slide up, then I cross over with my first finger to the seventh fret, third string. And then with my second finger, I catch the second string, eighth fret. So it goes like this, ninth, seventh, eighth. And then I slide up. There's the first three notes. Now you drop back down with your first finger to get the uh, seventh fret, fourth string. And that ends that phrase. So I slide up, but it's I slide up to that B at the ninth fret. It's kind of random, right? But it's those are your notes. Four, first four notes. Okay, then we move down two frets with my first finger on the same string, so fourth string. So after you play this phrase, you drop down two frets. One, two, 
And, the, and here's the next sequence of notes. So, sorry. There you go. So that's uh, fifth fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fifth string, and seventh fret, fifth string for the. Uh, and don't forget to hit that E on the seventh fret twice. So it's position change. Now repeat. The next one involves another slide, and everybody has a problem with the timing here. Again, if you struggle with the timing, I'd have to go over it in more detail. For now, the notes you're going to play are... Except I stretch, so I go... How did I do that? Well, it's part of the scale. I'm actually going through... Pentatonic minor, right? So this is my climb or mixolydian scale. Those are my two positions, right? So it's like, here we go. So the two phrases are, then it repeats again. Right? Now I'm going to put the slide in. Now the second group, you can play it with or without the stretch. You got to remember this is an interpretation of Jimmy's work. Um, it's very close, I know it is because I'm a huge Jimmy fan, but I don't know if it's exactly the same way he played it. And you know what? I think everybody's going to have a slightly different opinion of that. You'll you make your own judgment on it. Um, this is my uh, interpretation or, or my transcription of it. Uh, suck it back if you don't think it's exactly exact. Change it if you need to. Take the things that you think are right and then correct them to your ear or to your opinion. But this is, I feel this is very close. So um, again, repeat that riff. Now the next one you could, I, I like to string stretch. I go, I gotta stretch a tone. That's the note I'm stretching to, whether you know it or not. I, I'm stretching at the seventh fret to the note that's at the ninth fret. So it's like. So if you didn't know how to stretch or you're struggling with, you could go like this. That's the note we're stretching to. It doesn't quite have the same effect, but it would work. Instead of. Then I mute it and drop back down to the fifth fret. So watch. And I slide here too. I don't didn't mention this right away because. Don't try to get the whole thing at once. You've got to try and get the notes first and then work the slide into it. So you could do it that way too. I prefer to stretch like this. Then I mute it, then I drop back down. The trick is to stretch it all the way to the next string. The pitch that's at the ninth fret, right? Or, or, all three ways. The slide up, just the regular straight ahead, play the pitch. That's just playing the pitch. A sliding up to the pitch, and this is stretching to the pitch. Right? And the next one is really cool, and there's a, a couple of different ways to play it, but I'm going to show it to you one way, the easy way. It's going to be, this is another G, this is on the 5th uh, fret, 4th string, so you go, uh, your last riff is before you come into the next group, because I look at them in phrases. So first phrase was, we do that twice. Our second phrase is with the string bend. So together it's... string stretch. This is your next move. After you've done that, you hit the G again, which is on the 5th fret, 4th string, and then cross over to the open A, cross over to the open E, and with your first string, you strike another G on the 3rd fret, 6th string, so it goes... 
Now, the uh, second phrase and the fourth phrase are similar. In the second phrase, it goes... Right? So this stretch here... Now, the, the fourth phrase, so this is first phrase... Second phrase... Third phrase... Fourth phrase now... And last but not least, fifth phrase. So, for the fourth phrase, it's very similar to the um, uh, second phrase in the fact that it does the string stretch. Same string stretch and actual same timing. But instead of muting it, he comes back. So he adds one extra note instead of going and skipping the uh, seventh fret note, he actually plays it with a stretch like this, mutes it, but th then comes back to the seventh fret. So now it's, sometimes you see my second finger behind my third because, but it's really this seventh fret that I'm playing from. So, as opposed to, now the, the uh, fourth phrase is, you got to tuck those last two notes in. That's a bit tricky. And it depends on which version you listen to, whether you hear that or not. And last but not least, the closing, the closing notes, the closing group, the fifth group. It's almost, it's almost similar to the open note. The first three or the first two notes are the same as the open, it's just 9th fret, 4th string, 3rd fret, 7th, or should I say 9th fret, 4th string, 7th uh, fret, 3rd string, and then 9th fret, 3rd string. So at the end it's, and don't forget to hit the first note on the 3rd string twice, watch. Okay, so all together, the first group, with the position change. Second group goes like this. That was the second and third together, because it goes. And then the third group, fourth group, and group. All together, you get this. Whoops. Hope this gives you a good view of that intro riff because it's an amazing riff. It'll take some practice. You've got to go over it and over it till you get it smooth and you've got to listen to Jimmy's different versions of it. Good luck. I hope I helped you out. Um, peace out for now. This is Colin Daniel from RiffNinja.com. Uh, sorry, say that again. This is Colin Daniel from RiffNinja.com and uh, I'm uh, glad you took the time to see what I had to offer and why don't you come onto my site and really learn how to play. Uh, see you for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.